When we speak about leadership, we often talk about skills. Great leaders have certain qualities that make them great. Good public speakers, able to persuade and challenge others and make exquisite PowerPoint presentations. All that stuff, great stuff. But I find that the most important part of being that manager, the leader that we all dream of, is often missing. I once worked with a very talented guy, hardworking, great expert, very skilled. He had a team below him and he did everything that manager supposed to do. Focused the team on a bigger goal, appropriately delegated responsibilities and rewarded the team for the achievements. It seems like all the necessary boxes were checked, but not a single person who worked for him would call him a great leader. Now, just imagine that you're talking to a person who knows that he's better than you and he's not really interested in you. Well, this guy was like that. You could actually feel that he doesn't care about you or about anyone who would work for him. He only valued the ones who were more like him, overconfident and pragmatic, that radiated superiority. With them, he could bond and make passive-aggressive comments about the rest. You may have even met managers like that who are having this pragmatic vibe. They usually say things like, we know how this business work. It's work. It's business. We're adults. It's real life. Deep inside, they're almost proud of being these cold-hearted, high-performing machines that don't care about people's feelings. This is their definition of being professional. But it's not only a problem by itself, because this attitude is surprisingly contagious. If we're surrounded by people who are always telling us to be smart, be realistic, talk to the right people and ignore others, money over everything because it's business and you should be stupid if you think otherwise, all that makes us Think, okay, maybe it is how business works. Maybe we are stupid if we think otherwise. It is hard not to pick up this attitude if you work under a manager like that. And most probably they picked it up from someone they worked for as well. And when people like that lead teams, sometimes big teams, they do work on their managerial skills, but miss the most important part of leadership, a secret ingredient that makes a good leader a great leader. And the answer is simple. Truly great leaders are kind to others. Being kind to others is not something that you can just do once. It's a lot of small decisions that we all make every day. It's a decision to be empathetic if something bad happens with your subordinate. Or find a moment to cheer someone up who works for us, even if that would mean that we won't make time for something that is also important and we'll face the consequences of that. It's a decision to use our skill of persuasion not to push someone to work another extra hour, but to prioritize their health because it's more more important. In the end, it's a decision to wish a nice day to a person who cleans a coffee machine at the office. It's treating people who work for us the way we'd want to be treated. And not only those people that we personally like. Yes, people are different, but most of us want to work in an atmosphere of acceptance and psychological safety, where we're viewed as human beings, with inclusivity, with respect. If you experienced being a minority in a non-inclusive environment at least once in your life, you know exactly what I mean. This is what we expect from our leaders, and this is what we should show to our teams. This is what it means to be that leader, the one we all wish to have. You see, the higher our managerial skill set is, the more responsibility we carry for how we use it. Being kind to others is our part of the job as highly educated and influential people. But you may ask, wait a minute, maybe this leadership style that this guy used is necessary sometimes. And I will answer you, let's not confuse leadership style and the principles we follow. If we have an absolute junior in our team, they're usually quite motivated and inspired, but they simply don't know what to do. So we give them a lot of guidance. And if we have a senior expert, they need to know the direction, know that they're supported and basically being left alone. In these two cases, we use different leadership styles, and one person can use multiple styles in their practice. There are other ways to categorize leadership styles. Uh, democratic, visionary, transformational, many others. But you can remain kind and respectful to others while using any of them. Sounds kind of obvious so far, right? But I had people arguing with me on that. They say, this empathetic leadership of yours is a soft bullshit. For thousands of years, people ruled each other with a strong hand 
and we were fine. Or my favorite one, how would you ever lead an army with that attitude? But guess what? I'm not in the army. You are not in the army. Let's stop pretending that we are in the army because that's not true. We are civilized people who are doing business in 2023. Maybe there are places and circumstances where to succeed you have to be cold, pragmatic and insensitive as whole. But it's not the culture I personally choose to promote. And many really great leaders were not empathetic and compassionate since their childhood. You see, the truth is we're not only determined by our past experiences. And many people actively choose to care about others. It is recognizing that true leadership is not only about achieving targets or hitting goals, but also about creating a truly inclusive and uplifting environment for people who work for you, for people that you lead. It takes courage to do so, especially if we used to be put in a toxic working environment. But that's exactly what we do. We choose to care, to design our personal leadership journey. All right, now to practical stuff. Here are the things that you need on your way to be a great leader. And the first thing is self-awareness. You cannot be a great leader if your team don't trust you. And they won't trust you if they feel that you're not authentic with them. And to be authentic, you first need to understand yourself, at least a little bit. But how do you understand yourself? Practice reflection. Take regular time to set everything aside and give yourself a moment of quiet contemplation, journaling, meditation, whatever works for you. Reflect on your thoughts, emotions, reactions, your patterns of behavior. Ask yourself questions to understand your motivations, your values, what you're good and not so good at. Seek feedback actively from your peers, your managers, your team. Listen to it without being defensive. Genuinely consider what they have to say. Create the environment that would be safe enough for all these people to actually come to you and being honest with what they say. Embrace vulnerability through acknowledging your mistakes and your limitations. Once we learn how to embrace vulnerability, we become much more authentic. It makes people trust us more and makes us understand ourselves much better. Diverse your experiences, broaden your horizons, challenge your beliefs, get exposed to different cultures and perspectives. You can travel, you can participate in cross-functional projects or seek opportunities out of your comfort zone. Diverse experiences will help you gain a deeper understanding of yourself. Also, personal development resources are helpful. There are tons of them, but it's kind of a slippery slope, so keep it healthy. Okay, we got self-awareness. Number two, cultivate empathy. Put ourselves in other people's shoes. Try to understand their thoughts, feelings, and experiences. As a brain teaser, practice considering how your actions and decisions might impact others in different ways. Practice active kindness. Make a conscious effort to be kind with others in your daily interactions. I actually challenge you, for one week, do these two things daily. At least once a day, offer help to someone and show your appreciation to someone, also once a day. Develop your emotional intelligence, ability to recognize and manage emotions, both in yourself and in other people. I actually did a whole video on that with practical tips, so I will link it somewhere here. I have seen a lot of techniques for developing your emotional intelligence. And to be honest, some of them are pretty tricky, but there are a few things that almost all of these techniques had in common. So I will share it with you now. Finally, continuously learn. I'm in corporate for 15 years, and I sometimes cannot believe how much the working culture and practices changed since the moment I've started. Even if we take last several years, Gen Zs are actively joining the workforce, and some of us in management can barely understand them. If we are not learning, we are detached from our teams. But how to continuously learn? Embrace growth mindset. It's believing that you can get better with effort and practice. Encourage yourself to learn from both successes and failures. Keep an attitude of always wanting to learn and improve. Stay informed about the new trends and developments in your field. Read industry publications, attend conferences, connect with others and exchange experiences. Create the work environment where the learning is valued. Support and reward your team when they learn and when they share 
share these learnings with each other and lead by example and do the same. I want to say to all of us who decided to pursue this hard path of leading others, we can do it. And even if we're not blessed with the best leaders ourselves, we can become these leaders to our teams. Good luck to us.